Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachakwadash, which is to say the only true names of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. Also, want to give double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone who move well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts to waking up the hopefully elect other nation of Israel. And to the few sisters that watch, I say shalom to you as well. This is your brother Karab from the Great Millstone, Miami. Coming back into another lesson through the spirit and power of your Bashim Yahweh Shai and Lord's will. This is edifying. Okay. And what I meant to meant to say is I'm coming back at you with a, uh, another Psalm of the week. Okay, so uh, no further ado, let's hop on in. Uh, this week we rolling with uh, Psalms chapter 76. Yeah, Psalms chapter 76. And at the header it says the victorious power of the God of Jacob. Okay, the victorious power of the God of Jacob. Verse 1, it says to the chief musician on Neganoth. A psalm of a song of a sal, right? And it says, "In Judah is the most high known. His name is great in Israel." You see, so when it comes to dealing with the Bible, okay, and, uh, or as it pertains to the God of the Bible, well, the God of the Bible, okay, is the God of the Israelites, okay. And I did a video on this a couple weeks ago. If you're not an Israelite, then you have no business reading the Bible. Okay. Well, you know, you can read it, but, you know, as far as the, the promises and the blessings and whom uh, the Messiah died for, that doesn't pertain to you, okay, because it only pertains to the Israelites. And you read that narrative all throughout the scriptures from the book of Genesis through the Apocrypha all the way through the book of Revelations. Matter of fact, when you read Revelations, the seventh chapter, it goes into in-depth uh, you know the amount of people that uh, ultimately that'll be saved. Okay, does it put a put a specific number on it? No. Okay, it tells you twelve thousand men from each tribe of the nation of Israel. Period. Right. But it also mentions a great multitude. Okay, which which couldn't be numbered. You know, which is going to consist of men, women, and children. Okay, friends of the prophets, women, and children. Okay, but guess what? That multitude is going to be Israelites as well. When you uh, when you go into, uh, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to go into it, but brothers have done lessons on it. When you go into the word uh, kindred and tongues, well, you look up that word kindred, it goes back to the tribe. So, you know, it's plain to those who have wisdom, right? So uh, verse two, it says in Salem, uh, in Salem also is his tabernacle. And Salem would be Jerusalem, ultimately. Okay. And the, to say Salem in, in Hebrew, okay, is Shalom. Okay, which ultimately means peace. Right? So it says, in Salem also is his tabernacle and his dwelling place in Zion. Uh, there break he the arrows of the bow, the shield, and the sword. And the battle, Salah, verse four, thou art more glorious and excellent uh, than the mountains of prey. It says the stout, okay, yeah, the stout hearted are spoiled. They have, uh, they have slept their sleep and none of the men of night have found their hands. Verse six. It says, at thy rebuke, O Most High of Jacob, both the chariot and horses are cast into a dead sleep. Thou, even thou, art to be feared. And who may stand in thy sight? Um, who may stand in thy sight when once thou art angry? Okay, and that's, you know, basically the bulk of our message. Okay, uh, and, and it's, you know, more specifically to the Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Well, uh, a part of the good news is that the Heavenly Father is angry, extremely angry. 
okay? And all you got to do is open your eyes and just look at what's going on around the world, okay? Whether it be racial tensions, you know, and them stirring the pot, you know, with, with, with saying that the, the Haitians are coming over eating cats and dogs and all of this, and uh, this demon Kamala laughing, okay? Well, they're stirring the pot, okay? And ultimately, the Heavenly Father's playing on the hearts of these people, okay? Why? Because he's angry, and his anger ultimately is going to bring uh, a means to an end, okay? Which, for the Israelites, okay, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indies, uh, and Haitians, that that should be good news, okay? Because that ultimately incites that we're about to be bro uh, uh, broken out of prison, okay? Because that's what a, a America is, is a huge prison cell. Well, the good news is the Heavenly Father is about to break us out because if he doesn't, it will be here forever, okay? And on your tombstone, it'll say, he served the white man good and died, period, okay? So verse 8, it says, Thou didst cause judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth feared and was still. When the Most High arose to judgment to save all the meek of the earth, Salah, okay, and that's ultimately what's gonna happen. That's who the Heavenly Father is coming back to save. The scriptures say what? And the meek shall inherit the earth. Okay, well, the meek are the elect of the nation of Israel. Going back into what we, you know, what I quoted in Revelation the seventh chapter. Okay, that's going into the, the the remnant. Okay, that the Heavenly Father has always reserved unto Himself. Right? It says, uh, verse ten. It says, surely the wrath of man. Uh, the the wrath of man shall praise thee. The uh, it says the remainder of wrath shall thou restrain. Verse eleven it says vow and and pay unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai your power. Right, and that's that's another part of the message. It's time to pay up, man. Okay, the, 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 the good news is you know we're not under the stipulations under that first covenant anymore because we broke it. Okay. Well, the Heavenly Father's poured His Spirit out upon uh, uh, certain men, okay, to basically minister in what? The new covenant, you see, which is going to be a, a better covenant with better promises, okay? Not that that covenant was faulty. We were faulty, okay? But this one, the Heavenly Father is going to program us to where we'll never sin again, okay? And as the scriptures say, where there is no sin, I mean, uh, the wages of sin is death, okay? So, to flip it around, if you never sin, then you never die. You see, verse 11, it says, Vow and pay unto Yahweh by Shemiah Shai your power. Let all that be round about him bring presents unto him that ought to be feared. Verse 12, He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. You see, and this is extremely prophetical now. Obviously, okay, when Abraham, you know, went around conquering, I mean, not Abraham, but um, um, King David, you know, or Gideon, uh, the Maccabees, you know, uh, so on and so forth, you know, the mighty men of, uh, of uh, the Most High, okay, when they went around and they were doing their war campaigns, they would always pray to the Heavenly Father that he would deliver their hands into their enemies into their hand, okay, and he did. But ultimately, who gets the praise? Yahweh by Shemiah uh, Shai. Exodus chapter 15, verse 3 said that the Most High is a man of war. You see? And that's what people don't understand about the Heavenly Father. You know, they think he's some, you know, fluff and puff, you know, just sit back and, you know, just pop you on the hand when you do something wrong. No. The scriptures say that uh, uh, the Most High kills and he makes alive. He wounds and heals. Neither is there any that can deliver out of his hands. So every person that has ever died, Okay, whether old or young, the Heavenly Father gets the credit for doing so. Okay, why? Because that's his judgment. Now, he may use an entity to do it, but ultimately, the Heavenly Father is the one that put the spirit on that being, okay, to kill someone or for, you know, or, or like I remember last year, uh, this lady was in a house and a plane was flying over and um, a piece of the plane broke off and flew into her house, out of all the houses, and hit her and killed her. Okay, well, that was a direct hit from the Heavenly Father. Okay. But um we read this last part again. It says verse 12. It says, He shall cut off the spirit of princes. He is terrible to the kings of the earth. Right. And uh the world is about to, you know, uh the 
kings of the earth, uh, so to speak, uh, about to find this out in the most heinous way. Okay, because uh, we see now, like with the WEF and Klaus Schwab and um, Elon Musk and what you know, the things that are going on, you know, with this with this government and how they're trying to issue in this, you know, this NWO. Okay, well, uh, like we read in uh, the Psalms, the second chapter, that they're, they're raging, the heathen are raging and imagine a vain thing. And what are they imagining? That they're gonna continue to rule. Like the Heavenly Father's, you know, his chosen people, which are the Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians, he's just gonna allow us to be on the bottom and just be crushed, you know, by these heathens. And then they're just gonna walk off into the sunset. But that ain't the case, okay? They're imagining a vain thing that they, their houses are gonna continue forever, you know, as we read in the book of Psalms as well, okay? They think that they're gonna rule forever, but the Heavenly Father, like the scriptures say, he is terrible to the kings of the earth. And they're gonna find that out in the harshest way, okay? But ultimately, that's great news for those of us that believe. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there in the atmosphere, and Lord willing, this was edifying. Kwame Yasharala Shalom.